Hey guys, it's William Pierre, and welcome back to another video. Today we are on our Command Block Tutorial Episode 6, where we're covering scoreboard, test 4, and randomization. I did turn up my GUI scale for this episode so that you guys can see Command Blocks more easily. Um, and I should also mention that I will also be covering the uh, conditional tag, which you will see in Command Blocks here, again upon request. And I will be trying out a new editing format, and I'm also going to be covering chain Command Blocks. Because I realized, I realized that I never covered those, and if you guys want me to make a full video on everything about the 1.9 new Command Block stuff, just let me know, but I figured I shouldn't really make a video on it since there are so many people who already have. But anyways, so yeah, previously we have covered tell raw, execute, title, fill, clone, set block, summon, entity, data, effect, block data, teleport, TP, selectors, and, uh, and then this episode you're covering scoreboard, test for, and randomization. Wow, we have covered a lot in this series, guys, and I'm really excited to keep continuing this for you. Um, I will say, though, I apologize if I do take a little bit to reply to your comments sometimes. It's just that I've been really busy recently, and especially the next week, I will have a lot of stuff going on. So actually, this video is pre-recorded and is going to be released uh, on Wednesday. So uh, just know I'm probably not going to be able to rep uh, reply to your comments for a little while. But um, I, of course, do love doing that. So I guess we're just kind of kind of start on into it. So we're going to start with scoreboard here. Um, and scoreboard is a really awesome command that you will definitely see a lot of in anything Minecraft related. And while I would usually come to our other platform here, uh, I have a lot of stuff set up here for later. So we're going to move over to this platform we created a while ago. And all right, <laughs> time to cover a lot of scoreboard stuff. Scoreboard is one of the biggest commands you will see in Minecraft and I will be using it a lot. So it's a good idea to know uh, what scoreboard is. So first off, scoreboard allows you to set objectives. For example, if I create a new objective by going scoreboard objectives add, and I were to just call it, so this is your name right here. So I'm going to say um, test objective. It doesn't have to be spelled out like this, but it has to be one word. Um, and then the type of it. So actually, scoreboard objectives add, test. And then if I press tab, you'll notice my game is lagging out like crazy for now. And um, these are all of the different ones you could use. So for example, if I were to do, I could uh, do every time I mine redstone ore, it'll change the scoreboard. But in this case, we are actually going to be uh, basing off of something else. And we're going to put it as a dummy objective. I will show you other types of objectives later. But dummy objective essentially means that uh, I could set it to whatever it wants and it's not dependent on anything else. So yeah. so. Right now, the objective, once we add it here, and I, I need a button, <laughs> once we add the objective, it's there, but then what do I do with it? Well, let's first off check the objective. So let's set the display of it. So right now, we are going to, in the, so uh, list is uh, in tab here, so you notice my score for a different objective right now is one. So that's what the list sidebar uh, thing is, uh, or list thing. Um, sidebar is on the right, so I will show you that later. Below name, I'm not going to show today, but it, uh, it's basically if you're on a multiplayer server, you'll see under someone's name, their score, uh, etc. So we're going to go ahead, and now that we've added that, we're going to go ahead and scoreboard object, uh, oops, not sco, scoreboard objective set display sidebar, and we are going to set it to test objective. By the way, the reason I have your objective is because of when I was creating my selectors video. So that's not very relevant right now. But now we could go ahead here and we could list the objectives. Those are two objectives and what types they are. We could remove an objective, just like that. Or we could set the display, which, so we've gone over scoreboard objective right now. Next, we're going to go to scoreboard players because we need this uh, in order to move on. So first off, scoreboard player set will allow you to set a certain player's scoreboard value. So imagine Wavejump Games has a scoreboard value for test objective of 1. Now you'll see on the right, Wavejump Games' test objective is set to 1. So this could be used to store data, so like this is a lot in one command things you'll see scoreboard used in. Or it could be used even to create like uh, menus or kind of like decorative sidebars, like Mineplex basically uses the form of scoreboard for that. Um, I could also add, so scoreboard, uh, players, add, wavedom games, your uh, test objective one. I could go ahead and remove. 
uh, just like that. And now I've removed one. I could go ahead and reset, uh, and not with one. And now I have no score for it. I could list which players are tracked on the scoreboard at all. Uh, I can enable movement games uh, and a trigger. So triggers, I'm probably not going to be going over with this because they're slightly more complicated, but that has to do with the trigger command. When we go over the trigger command, that is when I will be covering uh, that. Or if I end up covering it in like a command ball contraption that I ever create. Um, so yeah, that's how you enable triggers. Uh, you could test, oops. Um, so let's test my test objective, 0 and 1. Uh, oops, I forgot I had no score for that. <laughs> well, we know that my score for your objective is 1, so if I check if it's between 0 and 1, yes it is, but if I were to check, say, between 3 and 4, it's not going to pop up there. Um, so test is a pretty cool thing, and I'm pretty sure you could hook up, hook up a comparator to a command block to do that. Um, so, yeah, guys, we're not going to be coming operation because it's a bit confusing. But we do have tag, which you may have seen before. Uh, if we actually, in my selectors video, I did cover tag at some point. Um, but tag will allow you to set, basically, tags for players. For example, um, if I were to create a new tag called test tag. Uh, there you go. I didn't need that. So now I have a new tag called test tag. And now if I check, if I were to be able to check my tags, um, tag video games lists, you'll notice I have my tag and test tag on me. So that's mostly scoreboard players in a nutshell. Um, again, it's a beginner command block tutorial, so I'm not covering everything. But if you guys were to ever want a super extensive one, just let me know down in the comment section. But of course, I don't like to get super in-depth on this because it is a beginner tutorial. All right. The next one I'm probably going to be covering most of, uh, it's scoreboard teams. And this is something that I've actually covered a little bit of before, believe it or not, in the series. Uh, and this is specifically when we're dealing with colors. So scoreboard teams. So currently, if I list the teams, uh, I have a team called T and a team called example team. I'm an example team, I believe. So if I were to go in scoreboard teams, uh, first off, let's join T. So now I added myself to the team of T. Of course, I could also remove uh, the the thing completely. I could add it, but obviously that's not necessary. Necessary? Necessary. Um, I could empty the team. So empty um, example team. So now example team has nobody in it. Um, I could go ahead and list the teams. So you notice I only have one team with anything in it right now. Um, and here's my favorite part about it, which is option. And this works a lot hand-in-hand -hand with selectors. But for example, say we have two players on a team and we want to turn off friendly fire. So if I were to do friendly fire, um, option T, friendly fire, uh, and I were to set to false, that means anybody else on my team cannot hit me and I can't hit them. Color is another really awesome one. So this is exactly what color this team will show up as. So say, for example, I were to set my color to aqua, you'll notice now my name is also aqua, uh, and I'll show up like that in chat, which is just really, really cool. Um, and if, actually, if I give myself the glowing effect, the cool thing about that is I turn blue. Right now, uh, I do need to fix my video settings, because as you can tell, it's not giving me the outline like it's supposed to, but it does definitely create a cool little effect there. Sorry about that, guys. My game did just uh, end up crashing, and my recording crashed. But anyways, yeah, we did just leave off and I was saying how this creates a really cool effect. So if I were to be instead on a team that wasn't Aqua, then I would have a different glowing effect. So also, if I go back to options T, you'll notice we have some other ones. So see friendly invisible. This means, I believe, if somebody on my team has the invisibility effect, I will be able to see them. If I said true. Name tag visibility. So this is if people can see your name tag. So if I turned off name tag figures name tag visibility for my team, nobody can see my name tag. Um, death message visibility, that's if you see your death messages in chat. And collision rule is if you can collide with other people in your team, I believe. I'm not sure if it's just in your team or with everyone, because I don't mess around with this a lot, but yeah. So let's see, so we went over, let's see, did we cover everything? I think we actually covered everything here. And I will show some more examples at some point as to how to use the scoreboard stuff because 
obviously they do have some uses but actually this is a perfect time to transition straight into the rest of our stuff because we are like 11 minutes in or so from what i know so yeah this command block was from when we were playing around with entity data and i'm covering right now chain and conditional so conditional we will cover in a minute but for now we're covering chain so right here you'll notice one two three four and i have only powered one of them uh one thing i'm going to show you though so the way this works is, say for example, I have a command block, you will have to start with an impulse or a uh, repeating command block. You can't start with a chain command block. Um, so say for example, I were to go ahead here and... Actually, I'm going to try something. I don't know if this works, but... <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure you could actually create loops with these. Um, but, let's see. Oops, I need a tab. So the way it works is basically you have one command block facing into a chain command block and you then say hi. Um, so you'll notice right now none of these have commands in it, so say 1, say 2, say 3, and say 4. So currently this isn't going to work, or at least it shouldn't have worked. <laughs> uh, actually I know why it worked, never mind. So basically, and the reason why is these are all set to always active, because I had a an always active one already copied. So now these are not always active, and you'll notice it only powers the first one. So here's why they need to be powered. If you were to say put a redstone block next to it, that would mean that every time it runs in a chain it would work. But if you don't have a redstone block next to it, nothing will happen. So, um, yeah, so 1, 2, 3, 4 are right there. And I do also, I believe, uh, after this I'm going to cover test 4. So if you're waiting for that, sorry. Um, but yeah, because these are all touching each other, I don't... No, if that'll change anything actually. But it, it looks like it also won't loop, by the way. So no need to worry about that. Alright, so right here, um, we have a conditional one. So this one's conditional and it's repeating and it's always active. But you'll notice nothing's running because uh, of one very specific thing. This hasn't successfully ran yet. So this said hi correctly because the command was correct. And now it's spamming hi worked because it, the condition worked. So if, if I said. And so I said set it to SASY, which is not a command, you'll notice the command did not run through successfully, and therefore this didn't do anything correctly. So basically what conditional means is that the command before it is not actually going to be, uh, it's, it's not going to run essentially if the command before it isn't working. So yeah, you could have basically chains with all conditional, which means that if something breaks in the system, everything breaks. Um, which is pretty nice to have. So yeah, those are pretty simple, and I'm actually going to remove these now so we have a bit of extra room. And we're going to move on to test four, and I'm going to use, I'm going to show you in the way I like to use it, which is using a comparator and a redstone lamp. All right, so what we have here is we're going to place down our comparator and a redstone lamp here. All right, so if I were to just do test four at E, clearly there's going to be an entity there, so it's going to say that. Um, and because they're always, yeah, I'm not sure why that pulls for so long, but it was able to find an entity, so it powered. Um, I can't, so sometimes there's also a bug you'll have. Sometimes you will have comparators that just don't work, um, unless this is always active, which it isn't. So, yeah, sometimes what you will need to do is basically create another command block that constantly replaces the comparator with the dead one, just to make sure uh, it doesn't all break. So I could also, for example do if there's a specific type of entity. So currently, there are no pigs in the world. That's not going to light up. But if I go ahead and summon a pig, here we are, now there's a pig there. Now it'll light up. And I could go ahead and kill this pig now. And basically, as soon as this command block were to update, again, for some reason not, there we go, now it is no longer working. So you may want to set that to repeat command block and have it be always active, because it's a much more... Uh, it's one that's working a lot better. So yeah, you'll see as soon as the pig dies, it, it disappears. Um, so it's essentially just a way to use selectors uh, in a different way. So, you know, obviously I could do this exact same thing just using the say command. Um, but, you know, test 4 allows it to be silent. And it's not a command you'll need to use a lot because... Uh, but you can use it, that's for sure. Alright. Next, we are moving on to our randomizer, because randomizer is the last thing I said I would cover in this episode. I'm aware this is a long episode, but I figured I would make an extra long episode just because the last one uh, didn't cover too much. Um, 
And yeah, I also wanted to cover this viewer suggestion. So someone said in the comments, and I will have their name up on screen right now in their comment, uh, they wanted to know if I could do an armor stand randomizer. So I did some research, and I saw that the best way to do this was to use the x2 command. So I kind of did my own take on it, and here we go. So I will show you exactly how this works in a minute, but for now, let's take a look. So if we actually stand above this thing here, you'll notice. Oops, this will randomly select one of them and place a redstone block. And whenever a redstone block is placed, it checks out. So it is completely random. Sometimes you have a or it's not true randomness because that is a whole different topic of conversation. We can't really have that in a game. But, anyways, um, there we are. So, I will cover how this works now, and you guys can, like, compact this, you can make your own spin on it, but it's essentially just a really simple way to do a randomizer. Also, the commands that run there can be whatever you want. You could set a scoreboard objective, part of the reason why I covered scoreboard this episode, um, or whatever. So, anyways, here we are. So, we are executing a random armor stand. This is very important right here. If you do not have type equals armor stand, this will not work. Because when you were talking about at R, um, it'll, it means that you have to specifically specify the type of entity. Otherwise, if I were to do say at R, it'll only say a player. So I have to say at R type equals um, not pig, for example. So now it'll say, uh, oh, an armor stand is not a pig. <laughs> uh, so it, it chose that. But if I keep doing it, eventually there will be a chance that my name will pop up. See? So you have to specify the type of entity when using add R. Extremely important. So next we are going to say, at its location, we're going to set a block two blocks above it. Okay, this part's kind of important. You need to say two blocks above it for a reason. And actually, you can do just one block above it, but I will show you exactly why. Um, so when you're talking about armor stands... Uh, here we are. Its hitbox is actually the block on the bottom. So this right here would be its hitbox. This is not its hitbox. Therefore, it means that um, right here, um, where on the top block of the armor stand, that would be where it would usually set the redstone block. But instead, we decide we don't want it to summon inside of the armor stand, so we're doing it. Uh, so we're having the redstone block summon right above it, and the command block right there. So that's kind of important to know in the future about armor stands, and we could just continue here. All right, so next block, next we're setting uh yeah redstone block zero destroy. It means we're not doing any specific changes to the redstone block itself, and destroy means that if there is a redstone block already there, it'll destroy it and re and then place a new one. Also, I'm gonna really quick here show you something that you could do with entity dot if you want to clean up your randomizer. Um, type equals armor stand. I'm pretty sure it's invisible. Invisible is 1B. And there you go. Now that I have set these to invisible, you'll notice you can't see these armor stands anymore other than their shadows. And this will still work just as planned. So you can create some cool randomizers and people will have no idea that there are even armor stands there. Um, yeah, even if you turn on hitboxes, you won't see them. So you'll notice I could see that armor stands hitbox, but not that one. So just a t handy little trick. And you could also make them invincible, so scoreboard, or not scoreboard, I'm confusing myself. Entity to add E, typicals armor stand, armor stand. Invince, uh, invin, invis, <laughs> invincible is 1B. Alright, so now I can't destroy these either. You notice I don't even see their hitboxes. Which is, of course, really helpful because you can't have people on your server destroying them. The last precaution you may want to take is entity data at a type equals armor stand. You can tell I've been away from the computer for a while because I can't type right now. <laughs> stand. Um, and we're going to also go ahead and no gravity. Wouldn't be. Check out my entity data video if you want to know about what I'm doing right now. But so now these guys can't fall either. I can remove the blocks under them, and they should not be able to fall, which is a pretty helpful little thing there. And... Oops. <laughs> can't break the invisible armor stand. So yeah, you'll notice now everything still works. And, uh, you can't even see it. So, it just kind of adds this really cool effect. 
you still can see the shadows. I'm pretty sure there is a way to make it so it doesn't show shadows. Although it actually might be because there are command blocks above it. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why, because I'm not a specialist on Minecraft lighting. <laughs> so let's go ahead back and summarize what we have covered this episode. Alright, so first off, we went over scoreboard and everything uh, that you need to know about it. Again, you know, not going into super specific stuff, because you don't need to know all this stuff uh, until you're creating a really complicated map. You could get away with just saying the basics so far. Test 4, again, we went over that, uh, not super complicated, and it's uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, actually, there's one more thing I need to cover with test 4, um, which is data tags. You could add data tags here, so if there was a data tag called SFSF, um, I could go ahead and test and make sure that data tag is true. Uh, anyways, moving on, we have randomization. We covered that randomizer that we made, and we also covered chain command blocks, and we covered... Um, conditional command blocks. So yeah, we have covered a lot this episode. Let me know down in the comment section below if there's anything else you want me to make. Um, once I am done with this week, I will have a lot more time to work on things. But as I said, I am a little bit busy for now. And this has been a really long episode. I'm going to try and condense it as much as I can. I'm trying out a new editing style, uh, which one of you suggested, which is basically I'm going to cut out the unimportant parts. And if I have any bloopers, I will put those at the very end of the video. Um, if you stay till after, uh, the end card thing. But yeah, guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye!